Look at this beautiful Mackenzie River making next to this mud soup. It says uh, old growth classic forest, Willamette National Forest, Central Oregon. Almost has a little bit of a rainforest feel. So much humidity and condensation from the waterfalls and rivers in the area that the whole area just kind of has a damp, mossy feel. So we cross our first bridge, pretty epic. And let's walk up and take a closer look at our close, dear pal, our trusty friend, Mackenzie River. And step right here. Look at the beauty of Mackenzie River. We're here at Willamette National Forest, Central Oregon, and look at this incredible river. Crystal clear mountain glacial runoff. Oh my gosh, this is beautiful. This is the world famous Willamette National Forest. Got a bit of a rainforest feel. Look at those trees across the way. This area is absolutely spectacular. Let's continue to hike along our trail. So I'm coming over to the trail proper. This is an old growth classic forest, Willamette National Forest, Central Oregon. And we're doing Tamaluch, Tamalich Blue Pool Trail. It's a, depending on who you believe, 3.8 or 4.5 mile trail. All trails says 3.8. The actual trail signage says 4.5. If I had to choose between those two sources, I would always pick the actual signage. Assume that they know better, but not always. So somewhere in that range doesn't really make much of a difference. What's 0.7 amongst friends, eh? So not too long of a hike, still kind of a short to intermediate hike, pretty short. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. This is my second hike for today. I actually started very early. I went and did Sahili and Kusa Falls. Um, 2.9 mile loop, did that for a few hours and enjoyed the waterfalls. I'm a person who I like to call myself a stacker. Like if I'm going to an area anyway and the drive is the worst part, then why not stack two, three, four hikes in the area into one super day if you can. You've already put in the initial investment of the drive. So started with the falls and now I'm doing Tamalich Blue Pool. I highly, highly recommend if you're making a day of it in the area, that you uh, combine these two hikes. I think there's a natural synergy as far as the length and the style of hike. I would almost always recommend you do Sahili Kusa Falls Loop, 2.9 miles, and this Tamalich Blue Pool out and back uh, together, because they're like five, 10 minutes apart, and they're kind of two world-class hikes, and neither one of them is too long. You shouldn't be so exhausted from one of them that you, that you need to call the day, realistically. So and if, if you've invested the drive, uh, you might as well just do them both in one day. That's kind of my attitude. So what I would like to do if possible is also add Clear Lake Loop after this, which is uh, another 4.9. I'm not worried about the mileage. I'm just worried about the time because I got to worry about sunset and stuff. And if I spend too many hours on these first two, then I can start running into dark and I don't really want to be hiking in the dark. So I might run out of light to do the third one, but I have the will and the energy. So we'll see. But at least stack two if you can. Always stack your hikes. It's a tip. I'm a firm believer in that. Two for one, BOGO mentality. Or BOTO, buy one, two free situation. As we continue to hike. I do enjoy these old growth classic forests. There's something kind of magical and ethereal about them. Kind of always feels for some reason, I always get the feeling that I'm like in a Lord of the Rings movie. Kind of got that epic, mystical feel. I think it's the moss on the trees is kind of a mood setter. So I definitely enjoy the vibe that this, this type of a vegetation profile, ecological profile gives you. I think it's very fun. Let me pan up and show sort of tall trees. We continue along our muddy trail. Today is April 9th, 2022. It was raining on the way here. So I've been rained on quite a bit, actually. I've been drenched. But right now it's either dissipated raining or I'm under the protection of the tree canopy, not actively being rained on. Maybe a combination of both. So today was one of those days I drove in, I had to turn my windshield wipers on max and I could still barely see. But I think right now we're getting a lull in the rain the onslaught oh my gosh this is a beautiful section 
look at this. I should be showing more of the river. This is uh, pretty epic. I'm gonna stop over here and stand on a little uh, game trail. Look at this. This is beautiful. This is Mackenzie River. That's the trail we're hiking on. It's the old growth forest area. This definitely has an epic feel to it. I already dropped the Lord of the Rings reference. I'll try not to do that too much, but that's kind of what I think of. There's some pretty epic old growth trees. Look at the size of these trunks. These are like massive, many, many hundred year old trees. And they've just been living their lives next to a beautiful river. Not a bad way to spend your life as a tree. So Tamalich Blue Pool is pretty interesting. It's a pool kind of surrounded on sides by a canyon. And because of that though, there's some angle aspects that one must be aware of. So to really get the blue pool portion, like it's always pretty, don't get me wrong, it's always pretty anytime you go. But if you really want to get that singing blue shade, you want the sun to be hitting it. And because of the sharp angles of the canyon, it's actually a better hike to do later in the day because you want the sun high up in the sky, which then will have the angle to get around the canyon and hit the water directly, giving you that blue color that is so famous. So today, I, I intentionally did this one not first for that reason. Also because I thought the waterfall would be more popular and I wanted to get that, be the only one there and I was till the very end. But there's a decent chance that because today is an overcast day, that despite my best efforts, I'm not going to get the, the sunny reflection, but that's okay. I think it'll still be beautiful. Um, as I said, I always think it's worth stacking hikes if you come to an area like this. So I think it's well worth seeing and viewing, so we'll go enjoy it. This is one of those tendril rivers where you got all sorts of little arms and sections and forks and it's all quite beautiful. We're coming up to a bridge. Something about the mix of these rustic bridges with this old growth, I think has got a pretty cool feel to it. I'll stop here for a second and show off this little arm of Mackenzie River. Very slow, lazy moving. It is raining on me, so, so I almost trip on the bridge. Ooh, look at this. This is pretty cool. I love these trees. These trees just frame the whole situation so beautifully. Just gives it that old growth epic feel. You want to talk about old growth epic? I mean, here you go. And I love that moss and all those stones across the way. That is gorgeous. This area is beautiful. This area's got kind of an epic classic feel to it. You could have a, either a uh, epic Lord of the Rings style tale or a horror movie here probably with witches either yeah, would work very beautiful old growth section of Willamette National Forest and I'm loving just kind of these gnarly mossy trees this is beautiful look at all that moss it's a particularly mossy area it's a hike through the old growth forest Willamette National Forest here in Central Oregon quite a gem I love these uh, mossy green rocks. This is gorgeous. When I pan up and look across the way, they're kind of a dead forest with this uh, rocky outcropping, this uh, canyon cliff. This is a pretty epic area. And combine that with this mossy, rocky section, this area is absolutely beautiful. Today is April 9th and it rains today. It's been raining on and off, pouring really. But we're getting some peaks of sunshine. This is somewhere between 3.8 and 4.5 miles, depending on who you believe. Look at this area, this is beautiful. I'm gonna stop here and kind of show off the mossy old growth forest section of this trail. Look at that kind of dead forest across the way, kind of spooky feeling. And look at that canyon up there, that outcropping. I mean, that's pretty epic, that ledge. Just scan up here and look at the clouds. It kind of, sun's trying to peek through our overcast day as we enjoy Mackenzie River. 
let's keep hiking angle of the sun hitting it is actually very important as far as fully getting the blue color the full experience so this is definitely one i'd recommend you do later in the day where the sun is high up in the sky it's got an angle that can get around those sharp canyon walls because if you can get the beautiful sun hitting the pool just right then that's when it really gets that magical blue color that makes it state national and even internationally famous kind of a ethereal blue color that is very unusual it's so my second hike for today i got rained and drenched on the first one i was the only one there um, right now between being in the can underneath the canopy of these big old growth trees and i think we're having some sun breaks right now it's at least temporarily stopped raining hopefully for the day but for a few hours there i was just drenched i like to wear ski clothing for hiking some might view that as overkill i do not because i like the waterproof breathability and the stretchability for always stretch makes it very comfortable to hike so i was completely drenched earlier but i was dry as a bone on the inside because it didn't soak through because it is perfectly waterproof I'm kind of a nerd when, oh wait, there's more to that statement. I'm kind of a nerd when it comes to uh, my tech. I like a minimum of 20,000 waterproof, 20,000 breathable. And if you don't know much about the scales, it doesn't mean much to you, but that's essentially extreme waterproof, extreme breathability. Once you get to 20,000 or beyond, that's supposed to be that, like you could go backpacking in during monsoon season in, in uh, Asia and uh, be dry as a bone. So. I like extreme waterproof, extreme breathability. That way you're prepared for anything. It doesn't matter if it rains, doesn't matter if it snows, doesn't matter what happens. The breathability is on the temperature management end. If you get too hot, your clothes are breathable. You don't sweat on the inside. Your sweat is able to have condensation through your clothes. And so you, and a lot of times they have good venting. So that's how I roll. And the four way stretch to me is a mandatory. For certain things in life, like when you once you go from dial-up to broadband internet you can't go back to dial-up i'm a person that once you go to four-way stretch clothing from like the old old style rigid no stretch clothing you can't go back i pretty much like all my clothing to be stretched at this point it's just so comfortable that nothing worse than feeling constricted by your clothing so i'd highly recommend looking into four-way stretch you know, they, they make a lot of clothes for a way stretch now, particularly ski attire, but ski attire, styling-wise, you can pretty much wear for anything. You don't have to wear it just for skiing. So I would recommend four-way stretch. I don't have any endorsements or anything. I'm not a big deal in the space, but I just say what I think. Oh my gosh, this is beautiful. Starting to climb a bit. This is a bit of a rockier section, a lot of roots I'm stepping on. I'll watch your step. Ooh. And as I'm coming around this corner and looking back, let's stop and look at the beautiful Mackenzie River. Look at that. That's, uh, that's beautiful. Getting the sun right on the river. Getting a glisten pop. Absolutely love it. Here, the sun is coming out. Stop here and admire this river. And look at that. I walk down this way. Better view. Look at that. That is beautiful. We're kind of hiking through a rocky, rooty section. This isn't a very high elevation gain, only like 300 or so, give or take. So that's pretty much nothing. Uh, just minor, minor machinations in the trail. Nothing too crazy. Look at how beautiful this is. Oh my gosh. I love kind of walking over to the, closer to the edge. I don't like getting too close to the edge because it's not worth tripping, but get a good sense of what we're enjoying as we climb up the forest. Relatively flat. These aren't longer leg burners. These aren't, these aren't one of those death marches where you're going up 2,000, 3,000 feet uh, up the forest. These are well graded. A little rocky, you gotta watch your step, of course, but beyond that, not too hard. It's interesting how rocky this is. 
kind of built into the rock, the rock formations overlooking McKenzie River. And we're hiking on a bit of a rocky obstacle course, but it's kind of fun to hike on in my humble opinion. Come over here and look at that. It's pretty beautiful. Paint over here and show off uh, the snaking Mackenzie River as we hike above it and beside it. It's currently raining. I don't mind it. I'm a true Oregonian. The rain only makes me stronger. In the obstacle course, the rain swirling around hit me in the face. Uh, as I said, I maybe it's the true Oregonian nature of me, but I think people in some states grow up with rain. It's not that big of a deal. In fact, they kind of like it. I like the rain. I know some people in other states, no offense, anybody in California, but Southern California particularly, but some states, rain is such a rarity that it's like a emergency disaster like you ever been like downtown urban area of some cities and starts raining and people like screaming and running out for cover like it's uh, acid rain or something it's just normal rain not a big deal it's kind of comical if you grew up with rain to see how some people react to rain if they're in an environment they're not used to it it's uh not a big deal it's kind of fun actually loving this canyon feel. This is a minor canyon, but it's kind of a rocky area. It's like I'm walking through interesting geological zone, interesting rocks that have been forming next to this river. This whole area is pretty interesting because you had McKenzie River thousands of years ago, and then a mountain called Sand Mountain erupted, creating a lot of lava and that's what created Clear Lake, which is a couple miles north of us, and created a lot of the geology of this area. So Clear Lake was basically Mackenzie, part of Mackenzie Running River being kind of stopped and siphoned off. And so this is a geological wonderland, a lava-rich area, a lot of previous seismic and volcanic activity kind of intermixed with this old growth forest area. So it's uh, not just an old growth forest trail, it's a bit more than that. It's a pretty epic feel to it. So I know some trails, if it's just a nondescript forest with a payoff at the end, you can get kind of bored doing the hike and then you're hoping the payoff is gonna be worth, the juice is gonna be worth the squeeze, but Personally, in my opinion, because this area is so geologically interesting, I, I find the hike itself actually quite beautiful. And I think that's makes the hike a much more fun if the actual hike itself is pretty epic. And then the end payoff is a cherry on top rather than the entire inducement of why you're doing it to begin with. I don't like that. Some people fall into that trap. It's like disappointment hiking. It's like, I'm gonna go do this multi-thousand foot elevation game that's ugly and awful, all for the hopes that at the end, I'm gonna get this one beautiful glimpse. It's gonna make it all worth it. And that's not my approach to hiking because I probably wouldn't even hike a trail like that, to be honest with you. I think the juice needs to be worth a squeeze and I think the life is a journey, not a destination. I think you need to actually enjoy the hike itself. I want every step from the first step to the last step to be beautiful and epic and enjoyable. And then when, that way, when I get to the end, it's just a cherry on top. That's kind of how I approach it. So I would do this hike even if there wasn't a blue pool too much at the end, which I find it interesting. But the blue, the blue pool does make it a bit more special and elevates it quite a bit. I won't go too close to the edge, but see what this overlook is all about. Oh yeah, 
you get a river view down below. If you can tell by my style, I'm not a person who likes to get close to the edge. It's just a risk mitigation. Better safe than sorry. I want to highlight the beauty of this area. This is the Tamalich Blue Pool Overlook area. Very interesting in its geological uniqueness. I'm going to go over and look at Tamalich Blue Pool. Look at the beautiful Tamalich Blue Pool. We're here in Willamette National Forest, Central Oregon. It's a interesting glowing blue that you kind of need the light and the sun to be right to really kind of be able to see it. The sun right now is moving between some clouds and kind of changing the light intermittently as I'm standing here. So I feel like for a few seconds we can see the blue and then it goes away. It's uh, teasing us, uh, but it's quite beautiful. This is a special geological formation, world renowned, known internationally, nationally, and of course within the state. This was created when a uh, mountain called Sand Mountain erupted uh, about 3000 years ago and the lava partitioned parts of Mackenzie River and this is one of the results along with Clear Lake a couple miles north which is one of the clearest lakes in the world you can see a couple you know 100 feet down to the bottom uh, and this is crystal clear as well that blue is now starting to come through a little bit better it feels like to me it's a haunting glorious blue almost a uh, blue raspberry uh, Gatorade color if that makes sense um, it's pretty gorgeous it's a one-of-a-kind uh, People actually come internationally just to come see this because it's such a special geological phenomenon. So we're lucky to have this here in Central Oregon, Lama National Forest. Uh, I, I feel like it's decently well known, but a lot of people don't even know it's here. It's uh, quite spectacular.